would you look at that? Punctures are a ball ache at the best of times. They're even more annoying if you're set up tubeless. So here is exactly how to fix your tubeless punctured setup. Whoa, right. First up, let's start off with some preemptive maintenance because not getting a puncture in the first place is the best way to not even have to fix it. So first, we're going to check to make sure that there's actually enough sealant in the tire because, well, the sealant seals up any holes. And there's a couple of ways to do this. The first way is the dipstick method. So the dipstick method is basically to begin with, we want to remove the valve core. You might have a proper valve core removal tool. If not, a tiny little set of pliers and just whiz that out the way is where we're going to begin. With the valve core out and the valve at the bottom of the tire, give it a moment. I've, I've let this one sit for a little while so that the sealant runs down. And basically we're going to take a, what do you call this? Zippy tie. Mind blank for a moment there. Take a zippy tie and we're going to dip it in there and actually just see how much, like a dipstick on a car, it shows on the bottom. So let's go for it. Oh, okay. Not very much at all. So there we go. And with the dipstick test, I can see that there's potentially not very much sealant in my tire, which is no good because if I do get a puncture, it won't seal any holes. You want to try and replace the sealant every three to four months, I reckon. That way, if you're getting a lot of punctures, maybe, or depending on how much riding you're doing, and it's just coating it and coating it, it does dry up. So look into that. If you're still not sure of how much sealant's in there, well then the best way by far is to actually just whip the tire off on one side, crack the bead, pop it off and have a proper visual check. That way you're definitely gonna know. But as mine is looking a little on the low side, it's time for a top up, I reckon. Couple of other great little preemptive checks to try and avoid getting a puncture in the first place are then, well, just checking your tire for any kinds of wear and tear or cut marks. So you can see this one here, you see the, the thread starting to show through. Now I have given this tire an absolute hammer in because it's got my EWS Tweed Valley sticker on it from last year and it's, I've been using it ever since. So it has had a hard life. So probably soon is looking to be replaced. And also just keeping an eye on my tire pressures as well. If your tire is really, really soft, then it's probably worth putting some more air in it because if you go out for a spin and you're, you're running really low pressures, you're more likely to get a puncture as well. But what do we do then if we do start to get an actual hole or a proper puncture in our tire? There are a few tools you will be requiring to fix a tubeless puncture. So first up is a tubeless tire plugger, something very similar to this. It's like a little spigot, little fork on the end, and that is where you put the bacon strips that you plunge through the hole to plug it up. If you've got a slit in the sidewall or potentially in the top of the tire, you'll need some tubeless tire boots. You're gonna need some replacement sealant because you will lose some through the holes. And finally, obviously a pump because you're gonna need to put air back in there. What do you do if you've got a really small hole in the tire to begin with then? Well, these should seal themselves because of the nature of the sealant. It congeals essentially when it reacts with the air being forced through. So actually a small hole kind of self fixes. That is the very nature of how the sealant should work. Uh, you can normally hear or see it, like if your wheels rotating, it'll be like tss, tss, tss. You might see a little bit of sealant coming through. Larger holes, well, they're gonna require a whole different technique. And that is where this comes in, the tubeless tire plugger. <sighs> Alas, this tire does have a hole in it then. And I've got this, so this is my tubeless tire plugger it's essentially like a needle and what this is in the end of it is like a bit of it's a rubber strip essentially a bit of bacon strip you might hear people call them and what I'm going to do is I'm going to push that gently through the hole but you have to be careful you don't go don't get too forceful because if you jam it all the way through you risk stabbing the rim tape and if you make a hole in that then well that's game over you got to take the whole tire off and everything but you can see it oh yeah you can see it leaking air so what I'm going to do I'm going to gently push that one through I'm going to give it a little twist and then when I pull it out, what will happen is the bacon strip will pull through the end of that. There's a slight cut in it. And you'll have two pieces poking out of the top. Whew, there we go then, got to that in the nick of time. And so what you can see is where I've done it and I've left almost two little tails poking out the top. Now what I would suggest is if you've got a Stanley, well, you're not gonna have a Stanley knife on you, that's probably pretty dangerous to hide. But if you've got a little knife, some people do carry one, just snip those uh, bits of excess off because what that's gonna do, if you ride it now as it is, you can ride it, let it seal, because the sealant's gonna block up any tiny little gaps there. But what will happen is under cycling and braking, that will just drag and pull that plug back out. So 
Try and trim that down, not like right flush to the bottom, but really close down just below the tread mark I would on this because then it'll sit nicely out of the way. And then really, actually, that tire is, is pretty good to go. Now, if you get a really big hole, you want to use the larger strips of bacon. So they're a thicker diameter for a much thicker hole. And I've had it in the past where a hole just won't seal for ages. And I've actually used two or three bits in there. So just persevere. But this tire really, with that plug in it, is actually now still good to go. I can pump that back up with a little pump and off I trot. Right, so that's how to fix a sort of a, an impact created hole in a tubeless tire. So say if you've bottomed out really hard on a big pointy rock and it's basically pierced the tire. That is how you will fix most of those. The most other common type of, of puncture on a tubeless tire is a slash to the sidewall. I mean, it does happen to the top as well, but again, catching it on a sharp rock or something like that, you will slice the tire, the tire sidewall, sorry. So you actually put like a long gash in it. Now that is a more involved process, but it's again, something that's perfectly fixable either at home, if you wanna do a really thorough job to, to keep the tire, to not waste it basically, or you can fix this out on the trail as well. And here, is how you fix it on the trail. Right, the slash fixing then. Well, I don't have a tire with an actual slash in it and I don't want to ruin a perfectly good tire because that's not very green of us and it's, well, it's just wasteful. So what I've done is I've drawn a line on this tire here and that's going to simulate where our slash is. So if you have taken a tire just off of your bike with a load of sealant in it, you are gonna need to clean it, get all the sealant off of it, and prep the area nicely. Now prep the area, kind of just get like any excess sealant off and maybe give it a little once over with a little bit of sandpaper, and that's just gonna rough it up. What I would do is use these. So these are tire boots, like tire patches if you, said, if you like. Like a similar to a patch for an inner tube, but they're just much, much bigger, much stronger, and go on a tire. Place your boot look over so here's our pretend slash over the, uh, the hole. Now what you can do is you can do this that way and then keep pressure on it like that. What I actually like to do is if you find it and flip the tire back in the other way, so to simulate our slash is here, roughly where the E is, I would actually put it that way because that's the natural shape of the tire. Now once you've done that, you can pop it back onto the rim, back onto it, and I would put a tube in there instead of filling it straight up with sealant because that actually needs some time to stick and go solid. Stick a tube in there, pump it up nice and hard and the pressure of the tube forcing out is going to obviously keep the tire inflated but also push the patch onto the tire and keep it forced on and then that way actually bingo bango leave it a day or so and you should have fixed it. It's then safe to whip the tire back out, uh, sorry whip the tube back out, put the sealant and reinflate it and you should be absolutely good to go. There we go. Then there's how to fix a puncture on a tubeless setup. I hope it's been really helpful. But actually, if you've got a damaged tire and you want to know more, then there's a link in the description to a video all about how to fix damaged tubeless tires as well, which really goes into depth. But for me, for now, I am out of here. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. And hey, if you want to join us at the Global Bike Festival, June 16th to 19th in Salbach, Austria, then tickets are still available. Head over to globalbikefestival.com and grab them there. Use Rich25, get a bit of money off, why not? But I'm out of here. Thanks a lot, everyone, and I'll see you later.